I just felt it would be uh, kind of rude not to talk about the person of Noah <laughs> from the Bible in our service uh, today. It's one of the uh, kind of favourite stories in the Bible. Lots of people, uh, both in the church but also outside of the church, will know a little bit about the story of Noah. It's found in the first part of the Bible we call the Old Testament. And I think it's especially a favourite story among children. Uh, I know that uh, uh, we have this fantastic Noah bath toy, you know, big bow and all the different animals and you know the lion and the giraffe and it was fantastic. And, and even the kids played a bit in the bathroom. <laughs> <laughs> it's great. Yeah, in some ways there's a not so friendly, not so children friendly side to this story as well. And we're going to think a little bit about that. Noah is also one of those mentioned in Hebrews 11. That's in the second part of the Bible, in what we call the New Testament. And he's in what is called this Hall of Faith. And he's mentioned as being a righteous man. But did you know that the story of Noah can mirror part of the story of Jesus? And also what is at the heart of what Christians believe. What we call the gospel. And gospel means the good news. <coughs> and I believe that when people hear the gospel, when they hear the good news of the Christian faith, and then they get it, and it's not something that they kind of just get up here, it's something where they get down here. When they get it, I think people are, called, are kind of compelled in many ways to respond to it. So today we're going to look at the story of Noah, obviously. But we're also going to look at part of the story of Jesus, and we're then going to look at the Gospel. And if you've not heard it before, I hope that you find it in some ways compelling today. For some, I think it'll just be a reminder of something you've heard before, be very familiar to, her, to you, and I hope it just kind of reminds you of something that's important. But also perhaps if you, it might kind of encourage you to challenge you or challenge you to, to tell us about it because Christians are called to tell people the gospel, called to tell people the good news about Jesus. So the first thing I want to say to you is this, man and women kind were and are in a mess. You know the first book in the Bible, Genesis, tells us at the very beginning that this world has a creator. A God. We didn't just get here by chance. In fact, if you uh, listen to Alison's service uh, from last week, she was talking a lot more in detail about why Christians believe that. Christians are also told in the Bible that God created this world perfect and that man and womankind are made to be in a relationship with God. But then, sin entered the world. That's a funny word, sin. We don't use it a great deal in society. Sin is the things that we do and we say that go against God's best for us, God's will for us. And sin breaks God's heart. But sin also breaks our relationship with him. In some ways it causes a barrier between us and him. Now the story of Noah in the Bible comes about 1,656, I've not worked this out, but somebody has, uh, kind of years after Adam and Eve. And we're told that things have continued to get worse. Let me just read to you verses 5 and 6. The Lord saw how great man's wickedness on the earth had become, and that every inclination of the thought of his heart was only evil all of the time. The Lord God was grieved that he had made man on the earth and his heart was filled with pain. So God looked at the time of Noah and he saw that there was this mess in the world in which he had created. And he told him it hurt God, it caused him a lot of pain. Sadly, sin also continued on after the time of Noah, and has continued on today. There is still so much of the world in a mess. 
And we see that very clearly, don't we? We can see that on a large scale. So we see the mess of things like war in the world, or greed, or inequality, or injustice. We see that much of the world is in a mess, in a big scale. But we can also think about it on a personal level. Because, well, if we're honest, we know that there is no perfect people. We all mess up sometimes. We might tell lies. We might do actions which are not good. We might have thoughts which are not very uh, healthy. We might say words which are not what is the best for us. The Bible says there's many effects of sin. Sin destroys and it hurts and it pollutes and ultimately it causes eternal death. So there was a mess in the time of Noah, but there's also a lot of mess around there. So the second thing I need to say is that sin cannot be ignored. God cannot ignore sin. In fact, sin requires punishment. Or to put it another way, it requires justice. It's just the rule that we live by, isn't it, if we're honest? When something happens, when we do wrong, we would expect there to probably be a punishment. I learned this rule a lot growing up. And my mum's here today, and she'll tell you that, you know, yeah, that, that applied to me many, 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 many times. When I did wrong, I know I look saintly now, but I was always like this. When I did wrong, there was a variety of punishments <coughs> laid out by my loving family, my loving parents, at that time. It's kind of what we do. When there's wrong, there should be punishment. You see, man and woman's kind sin against God is a lot more serious. So in the time of Noah, we're told that God sent a great flood to cleanse the earth. It says again in the Bible, I'm going to bring a flood waters on the earth to destroy all that is under heaven, every creature that has breath of life in it, everything on the earth will perish. And after the flood, we're told that God made a promise. We're told that after God had flooded the earth with, uh, to sort of cleanse the earth after the time of Noah, we're told that he made a promise that he would never do it again. And what God did is we're told he put a rainbow in the sky to really cement that promise, to say, you know, the mess of the world, I've flooded the earth to cleanse the earth because sin has to be punished, there has to be justice, but I won't do it again. Because here's the sign of that, a rainbow. But we've already said, haven't we, that sin continued. And sin continues on even today. So in some ways what this did is it made a God dilemma. See, sin cannot be ignored, it requires punishment. But then there was this promise. God said he wouldn't wipe mankind away again, like the time of Noah. And also, actually, into that we have God's love for us. See, God desires a relationship with us. He loves us. We're his creation. But sin causes a barrier in that relationship. So God instead sent Jesus, his only son, into the world. His perfect son. And we're told that Jesus died on the cross. And when he died on the cross, it's what we call a sacrifice. Meaning, in another's place. There's a Bible reading, a verse that says this in 2 Corinthians 5, verse 21. It says, God made him, meaning Jesus, who had no sin to be sin for us, so that in him we might become the righteousness of God. See, Christians believe that our sins, somehow, our wrong, our bad thoughts, our bad actions, were put on Jesus on the cross. His death was the ultimate sacrifice in our place. His death was the ultimate punishment once, but for all, including me and including you. So we have these situations where in Noah's time there was this mess of the world and God flooded the world to cleanse it again, but then made a promise that he would never do that again. But then as sin continued and mess continued, God had to find a way, and his way was to send Jesus into the world to die on the cross for the punishment of all mankind. Because thirdly, Noah and the cross are what we call redemption stories. Redemption means the action of saving or being saved from sin or error or evil. 
See, in the story of Noah, we read that God saw that Noah was a righteous man. We said that God saw Noah and he found favour with God. You know, I kind of like God to say that about me, if I'm honest. I'd like God to see me and say, you know what, David is a righteous man. Please. <laughs> you know, I'm about our Noah. That God will look on Noah and say, he is a righteous man one day. And actually, I hope he says that about you and me, all of us really. That God would look upon us as men and women and say, they're righteous. I, they find favour in my sight. So God redeemed, you see. He saved Noah and his family, and of course, two of every kind of every animal, through a big boat, or what we call an ark, made of wood. And this is a reflection of something else made of wood. This is a reflection story, a redemption story, like the cross of Jesus. See, for us today, God has provided a way that we may be saved from the consequences of sin through the cross of Jesus. Jesus took the punishment on him instead of us. Now, if we go to the cross, if we are sorry, if we repent, which means we turn around from our mess, then the Bible says that we too can be saved. We can be saved from our sin. And also we can be saved to have a relationship with our God. That relationship can be restored. And you see these stories that we have, these you know, years apart in many ways, but they're both stories of redemption. They're both ways in which God gave us a chance to start again. They're both stories of new beginnings. See, after the flood, Noah and his family came out of the ark. And God made them a promise and he put a rainbow in the sky to fulfill, to sort of, as a sign of that promise. But then God gave them a new start. He gave them a new beginning. He said, go again and do good and here's a new start for you. So it is for us today. We too, through the cross of Jesus, are offered a new beginning, a new start. Someone said it's, it can be illustrated as simple as A, B, C. They said it's about A. It's about, um, A stands for accept. It's about accepting that actually we are, we do do wrong. It's about accepting that sometimes we mess up, we do do words, we do do actions which, well, we go against our Creator God and the best He has for us. But then B, we need to believe. We need to believe that there is a God. We need to believe that Jesus did come, God's only Son, and die on the cross in our place. He took the punishment as a sacrifice for you and me. But then C. C is about a choice. See, God gave us free will. God won't force himself to, for us to follow him. God says, I want to give you a choice to follow me. And each of us, every person alive today, I believe, has a choice to make. And the choice is, will we accept that we've messed up? Will we believe that God is real, that Jesus died for us on the cross? But then will we choose to allow God to be part of our lives? That's what we prayed for earlier on, didn't we, for Noah, that one day he will come to know Jesus as his Lord, as his Saviour, as his friend, because he makes that choice personally for himself and maybe one day we'll baptise him in the big bath <laughs> as an adult because he said I understand that I've gone for that mm. see when people do that they receive a new life in Christ they receive God's forgiveness isn't that great mm. they receive a relationship restored back with God they receive purpose they receive keys to God's kingdom storehouse which is full of his love and his peace and his joy and so much more. The people who do that too receive eternal life. They receive a place in that heavenly home where I believe our Queen is now. Yeah. Because I believe our Queen abc I believe our Queen accepted that she'd messed up. I believe our Queen believed in God and Jesus. And I believe our Queen made a choice to become a Christian, to invite God to be part of her life and to follow him. So I believe that she discovered the riches of God in her life, but now it's also <coughs> she's discovering the richness of being with God in eternity. 
You know, I said at the beginning, for Christians, all this is called the gospel. It's the good news of the Christian faith. And somebody said, you can do the gospel, you can talk about it like an acrostic. Do you know what an acrostic is? When you take a word and you use each of the letters of the word to kind of mean something that connects into the word. So somebody once said, it's a bit like that. If you use the word G, forgot at the beginning of the word gospel, it stands for the fact that God created us to be with him. Then you move on to the letter O. Our sin and mess separated us from God. Then the third letter S. Sins cannot be ignored or removed just by good deeds. Well, actually just by going to church. Some people think that. Some people think if I do lots of good things, that will tip the scales my way. And actually I do more good than bad, so actually I'm going to be alright. It's not what the Bible says, it's not about good deeds. It's about P. The price for sin had to be paid. A punishment had to be given. Jesus died on the cross in our place. And then there was a glorious resurrection. So the letter E. Everyone now who believes and trusts in him will receive forgiveness. Everyone. God doesn't turn anyone away. He welcomes us all to him. And the letter L. They start a new life. Anyone who accepts Jesus into their lives starts a new life with Jesus. That Jesus is their friend now. What a friend we can have in Jesus. A new life with Jesus now, but also a new life one day, forever in eternity in heaven. In many ways, the gospel, some people say, is held in one verse of the Bible. A very famous verse in John 3, verse 16, and it just says this. For God so loved the world that he gave his only Son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish but shall have eternal life. It's the good news of the Christian faith that God invites us all into a relationship with him because he's provided a way for us all to do that. And as I finish, and I was thinking about what to talk about today, and I thought, oh, I'll talk about Noah because that would we're doing Noah's dedication, it seems so, you know, why not? And then I looked up what the word Noah means. Do you know what the Noah, what word Noah means? I put you on the spot there, I didn't jump. Get us little books, can't you? Yeah. Yeah. Naughty boy, no, it doesn't mean that. <laughs> it doesn't mean that at all. The word Noah actually means rest. There you go. And when I thought about that, I thought, you know, rest is a real gift today's world. We talked about Noah being a gift, didn't we? And actually it just reminded me of a story, a true story that happened in 1871 and I just want to finish with this story really. It's about a man called Horatio Spafford and uh, he knew something about life's unexpected challenges. See he was a successful attorney and real estate investor who lost a fortune in the Great Chicago Fire in 1871. Around the same time, his beloved four-year-old son died of scarlet fever. Thinking a vacation would uh, do his family good, he sent his wife and his four daughters on a ship to England, planning to join them after he had finished uh, some pressing business at home. However, while crossing the Atlantic Ocean, the ship was involved in a terrible collision and sunk. More than 200 people lost their lives, including all four of Horatio's precious daughters. His wife, Anne, survived the tragedy. Upon arriving in England, she sent a telegram to her husband that began, saved alone. What shall I do? Horatio immediately set sail for England. At one point during his voyage, the captain of the ship, aware of the tragedy that had struck the Spatford family, summoned Horatio to tell him that they were now passing over the spot where the shipwreck had occurred. As Horatio thought about his daughters, these words of comfort 
filled his heart and mind. He wrote them down, and they have since become a well-known hymn. These are the words he wrote. When peace like a river attendeth my way, when sorrows like sea billows roll, whatever my lot thou hast taught me to know, it is well, it is well with my soul. You know, life can be difficult. Life can be hard. Life can be stormy in all kinds of ways. But I honestly believe that we can find rest. We can find peace. We can find hope. And it comes from a relationship with Jesus Christ. You know, it's a tragic story. But I believe that in somehow through his faith, even in those circumstances where I'm sure there was anger, I'm sure there was questions, somehow Horatio, even in that place, in his faith, in Christ, was able to find rest. Rest is such a precious gift, in more ways than one. So as I finish, I have to ask you a question. Do you have inner rest today? Whatever is going on around you, can you say today, it is well with my soul. I believe in Jesus we can. And I believe that Jesus would help me to know that more and more in the days, weeks, and months to come. Amen. As we think about those words, we're going to sing that song, It Is Well With My Soul. It's an old hymn. I think the words are appropriate as we share that story again this morning.
away.